What's up, everybody? Kyle here at Let's Talk Wax, and the Tops 2022 Update Series Checklist dropped today. This product is set to release on Friday, and I'm going to bring you the top 15 rookies to check out. Stay tuned. All right, now before we jump into the top 15 and dig into some stats, I want to let you guys know about a few things. All 15 players on this list are base of our base rookie cards in the release. They're not SP'd, um, they're all in the base checklist. So they're gonna be pretty prevalent. The print run's probably going to be pretty high, but they're all gonna be readily available in 2022 update. Now you'll also see some red and blue text on the screen. The red indicates really good numbers and the blue indicates kind of bad numbers for me. You'll also notice that some of the text is in bold. Now the bold red numbers indicate the best number on the list and the bold uh, blue numbers indicate the worst numbers on this list. And I also wanna mention that all of the players on this list also have an autograph rookie card in the release except for Seiya Suzuki. Now we're gonna kick this thing off with Joe Perez at number 15. He's a third baseman in Houston Astros organization. He only had one professional plate appearance in the MLB, so I didn't bother to go through his stats, but he's 23.2. He's had a really good career in the minor leagues. He hit 272 with a 170 ISO and a 24.3K to walk ratio. Now some interesting things about Joe Perez, he had a really big year in 2021. And between 2021 and uh, 2022, he hit 54 doubles and 25 home runs while holding a 290 batting average in the minor leagues. Uh, the difficult thing with Joe Perez is the fact that Alex Bregman is signed with the Astros through 2024. So he may be an off-season trade piece and maybe a club will pick him up that needs a, th a third baseman that's ready for the major league level. But uh, it's going to be tough for him to get in the lineup in Houston right now. At number 14, we have Gabriel Arias with the Cleveland Guardians. He's 22.6. He posted a negative war this year. Didn't really have a very good start to his professional career. Uh, he had the lowest batting average of any player on this list. But he had a really small sample size. He only had 57 plate appearances. But uh, he had a pretty solid minor league career. I don't think Arias is going to be a superstar, but I think he could be a solid player down the road for the Guardians. Hit 29 doubles and 13 home runs back in 2021 in the minor leagues, the upper minors between double A AA and triple A. So really good career stats minor league wise for Arias. At number 13, we have Seiya Suzuki, the oldest player on this list at 28.1. He's actually the oldest rookie in Major League Baseball right now. He was signed out of uh, the Nippon Japan League. But he's a Chicago Cubs right fielder. He has a 2.0 war, a 116 WRC+, and he put up some decent numbers in his rookie year. He hit 262 with a 171 ISO, 14 home runs, and 9 stolen bases. He's also got pretty solid K numbers at 24.7 and a 2.55 K to walk ratio. And as I just mentioned before, he doesn't have any minor league stats because he came to America and he was pushed right into the major league. So at number 12, we have Royce Lewis, probably one of the most interesting prospects on this list. He hadn't played baseball in two years prior to the 2022 season. Uh, COVID shut him down in 2020 and he had uh, an injury that lasted the whole season in 2021 and he made his first first appearance in two years in 2022 and actually made it to the major league level and he only had 41 plate appearances but he did really really well but the thing to consider here is it's a small sample size so he's 23.3 he posted highest wrc plus he's actually tied with another guy for the highest wrc plus but the wrc plus is kind of inflated because of the small sample size but he hit 300 with a 250 iso two homers and uh, held pretty good K, per, K, K percentage at 12.2, but he did strike out quite a bit as opposed to walks. He posted a 5.0 K to walk ratio. Now, he hasn't played, like I said, he hasn't played in a long time, 
And uh, his stats go pretty much all the way back to 2019. He spent a little bit of time in double A in 2022 as well. But he hit for average, he hit for a little bit of power, and he held pretty solid K numbers through his minor league career. Now, I think the big thing with Royce Lewis is staying healthy. If he can stay healthy going into the 2023 season, I think he could be a pretty good player for the Twins. And he spent most of the time at shortstop while he was up at the big league level. So at number 11, we have MJ Melendez, 23.9, and he caught and played outfield for the Kansas City Royals this year. He had a sub-100 WRC+. Hit 217, which isn't very good, but he had a 176 ISO and hit 18 home runs in his rookie season while holding really good K numbers. He had a 24.5 K percentage and a sub 2 K to walk ratio, which is just where I like, guys. I like the K to walk ratio to be under 2, and I really like the K percentage to be under 20, and that's what I do like evaluating prospects. And if rookies can do it, that's really exceptional because it's difficult to do in your first taste of big league baseball. Now, in the minor leagues, he didn't hit for a lot of average. His career really wasn't that great until 2021. He hit 41 home runs in 2021 and just absolutely blew up and got a lot of attention with that. But he hadn't really hit very well up until 2021. You can see his career average, like I said, is 237, the lowest on this list. And he also had the highest minor league K percentage, 29.5. Leading off our top 10 is Philadelphia Phillies shortstop Bryson Stott, who is now officially World Series bound, 25.1 years old, held a 1.4 war throughout the season with an 83 WRC+. plus. He hit 234 with a 124 ISO, 10 home runs, and 12 stolen bases. He didn't really put up exciting numbers in 2022, but he had a pretty good back half of the season after a really, really awful start. So I'm hoping things can get better for him in 2023, and I think they will based on his K numbers. He had a 19.1 K percentage and a 2.71 K to walk ratio. So he's not completely overmatched. He just struggled, I think, to get the hang of major league pitching at the front half of the year. Now, over the course of his minor league career, he hit 300 with a 195 ISO and a 21.8 K percentage. And he looks like he could be the long-term stick at shortstop for the Philadelphia Phillies. At number nine, we've got Spencer Torkelson, one of the top prospects in uh, baseball coming into the 2022 season. He was one of the top college bats, probably the top college bat drafted out of the 2020 draft class. He was with the Detroit Tigers this year playing first base. He's 23.1, so he's kind of in that fringe age, you know, between good and bad for a major league player. He posted a negative war and a 76 WRC+. plus. Didn't hit for much average, didn't hit for much power, but it takes guys sometimes a bit longer to adjust to major league arms. Now, Torkelson is a more power over hit bat, and you can see that based on his career minor league stats. He hit 258, but he posted the highest career minor league ISO of anyone on this list at 256. So he's got some juice, and he had pretty solid K numbers in the MLB this year and throughout his career in uh, the minor leagues at 22.6. So I'm thinking that he'll have a better year in 2023, especially after getting some experience and getting a ton of reps and at-bats in the 2022 season. At number eight, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks center fielder, Alec Thomas, 22.5. And he was recently joined by uh, Corbin Carroll, the uh, second prospect to get called up from the Diamondbacks organization to play outfield. But he held a 0.5 war, a 71 uh, WRC+, plus, which was the lowest on this list between him and C.J. Abrams. He hit 231 with a 113 ISO, eight home runs, four stolen bases, but he held really good K numbers at 18.0 and a 3.36 K to walk ratio. He could take a few more walks. He was a kid who had a really stellar minor league career. He hit near 300 at every level he played at, and the power's always kind of been fringe, but he did put up a 186 ISO for the career in the minors. So he was a 309 career hitter with an 18.5 K percentage, which is pretty solid across the board in the minor league. So he's another guy I think who could have a pretty solid year in 2023. At number seven, we have Jose Miranda. Spent most of the time at first base in 2022 with the Minnesota Twins. He's a little older than everyone on this list at 24.2. 
He had a 1.1 war and a 117 WRC+. Plus. Hit 268 with a 158 ISO and 15 home runs. Now, the cool thing about Miranda is you don't see any blue on his line. So he did fairly well for his first year in the big leagues. He held a great K percentage at 18.8, much like Alec Thomas, but his K to walk ratio was a little high. If he could take some more walks, I think that could help his ISO grow a little bit in 2023. Now, career-wise in the minor leagues, Miranda was a lot like MJ Melendez. He didn't have a stellar career. He had a much better uh, career than MJ Melendez, but he really broke out in 2021. He led the minor leagues in several different offensive categories and just really put his name out there in the prospecting community. And it kind of carried over to the 2022 MLB season where you can see he really held his own. Our right, number six, we have CJ Abrams. You may think I have CJ ranked pretty high at number six. He had the lowest war on the list. He had the lowest WRC plus on the list, the lowest ISO and the worst K to walk ratio on this list. But he was traded. He entered a new organization. He's one of the youngest guys on this list at 22.1, a fresh 22 years old. And he's a really good athlete with a very good hit tool. He had uh, a 331 career batting average in the minors with a 180 ISO and a 15.5 K percentage. So some really elite numbers right there, especially the hit tool. And, you know, the kids only had 534 minor league plate appearances between the shutdown for COVID and the leg injury in 2021. He hasn't really had that much experience playing at the professional level. And he's already in the major leagues, you know, with 534 plate appearances under his belt, not games, you know, that's just plate appearances. That's a about a season and a quarter for you know most players. So he's already up in the major leagues after just a year and a little bit of change of experience in the upper minors. So I really expect CJ to have a big year in 2023. Now, before we get into our top five, if you guys wanna help support the channel and you enjoy my content, please head over to my Patreon. I'll put a link to it in the description. I've got a ton of exclusive content over there and you can help support me. I've got Bowman Chrome autograph checklist breakdowns from 2019 to the present. I've got a top 100 Bowman Chrome autos list and a top 100 Bowman Chrome autos under $50 list where you can find a ton of my favorite sleepers. You get early access to all video information over there. I have a monthly price tracker with about 125 autos. We have a private Discord server with about 150 members, and I do team break guides for all releases from 2020 to the present. If you want to check that out and support the channel, a link's in the description. I was also very lucky to get Break Grading to send me a lot of free cars to give away to you guys, and I'm giving them away on my social media platforms. Uh, my Facebook group, Let's Talk Wax, baseball card prospecting resource, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Talk Wax to jump into these free giveaways hosted by Break Grading. This is going to bring us to the top five on our list, and you can already see there is a ton of red in this data. These are five of the top rookies from the entire season in 2022. They all have very large sample sizes and they all performed extremely well in their first year in the major leagues. At number five, we've got Brennan Donovan with the St. Louis Cardinals, a guy that plays literally everywhere besides catcher and shortstop. He is the perfect utility man in the Cardinals organization. He's the oldest guy on this list next to Seiya Suzuki at 25.8, and he held a 2.7 war in 2022. A 129 WRC plus, he hit 281 with a 97 ISO, and Donovan's not really a power guy. He's kind of a lot like Stephen Kwan, but not quite as good of a hit tool. He's a bat and contact first hitter, but like I said, his defensive abilities to play anywhere and his ability to also hit for average and get on base is just really exceptional to have in a player. He's got a 15.0 K percentage and a 1.17 K to walk ratio. So like I said, he's a lot like Stephen Kwan, just not quite as good at what he does as Stephen Kwan. Elite uh, K numbers, hits for average, and his minor league career was pretty solid. He hit 285, 
throughout his career in the minor leagues with a 144 ISO and obviously great K number. So that's Brennan Donovan, St. Louis Cardinals at number five on this checklist for me. And we're going right into Stephen Kwan, his almost clone with the Cleveland Guardians. Left fielder, 25.1, held a 4.5 war this year with a 124 WRC+. Stephen Kwan hit 298 with a 101 ISO, and he's not going to hit for power. It's just not what he does. He gets on base. He's got a 9.4K percentage and a sub 1K to walk ratio, and he's got some of the best K numbers not only on this list. He's got the best K numbers on this list, as you can see they're both in bold, but he's also got some of the best K numbers in all of professional baseball. So this guy is just a hit machine. In his career in the minor leagues, he hit 301, and he had a 9.12K percentage throughout his career, which is also the lowest on this list. So Stephen Kwan, a really fun and exciting player in the Cleveland Guardians organization. At number three, we've got Bobby Witt Jr., 22.4, one of the younger babies on this list with a 2.3 war. Now, he hit 254 with a 170 ISO, but he also hit 20 home runs and stole a uh, checklist leading 30 bags on this group only. So he had a really good year. He's very young, and I think as he begins to make more contact, his power numbers are just going to increase, and he's going to be a special player down the road. He played the majority of his games at shortstop for the Royals, and the only big flag I have with Bobby Wood Jr. right now is he's not taking quite as many walks as I would like him to. He's got a great K percentage at 21.3, which he lowered tremendously throughout the course of the year. But if he could take a few more walks, like I said, I think that'll help him to unlock even more power because he has it and he could have uh, maybe a 30 home run and a 30 stolen base year here in the future or in 2023. He played significantly well. He was a top five prospect for, uh, for a year or two, hit 283 as a career in the minor leagues and a 237 ISO with, with a pretty solid K percentage. So he's going to come in at number three for me on this checklist. And the one and two spots were very difficult for me. Uh, Jeremy Pena's had such an exceptional year, but I had to put him at number two behind Julio Rodriguez. He's going to play in the World Series with uh, Bryson Stott shortstop with the Astros. He's 25.1 with a 3.4 war this year. Hit 253 with a 173 ISO, 22 home runs, 11 stolen bases, played all of his games at shortstop. He did not play second base, third base, shortstop. He played, he's, he's Houston shortstop, flat out. And going into the season, there were a lot of questions as to whether he could handle that with Correa being traded, and he's handled it significantly well. Now, you'll notice that he does have one blue stat. It's his K-to-walk ratio, but it's always been high. Throughout his minor league career, he's always held a high K-to-walk ratio, but it hasn't really impacted his performance. He's kind of like Ellie De La Cruz, who strikes out around 30% of his at-bats, but he just does everything so well that it really doesn't seem to affect his numbers. In his uh, minor league career, he hit 291 with a 153 ISO and a 19 K percentage. So Jeremy Pena is one of the big breakout players in 2022. Had a really big year, and I'm super excited for the kid. He's really fun to watch. At number one, Julio Rodriguez, Seattle Mariners, center fielder. And this is, this is a special player. I think a lot of people knew how special he was going to be. Uh, just by the way he hit in the minor leagues. He was challenged very aggressively by the Mariners. He played way under the league average at every level in the minor leagues. And when he got to the big leagues, he had a bit of a slow start, you know, getting used to uh, the big league arms. And he kind of got, you know, uh, messed around with the umpires and didn't have a lot of favorable calls go his way. People started to panic. And I was just thinking, man, he's so good. He's so good. It's going to come. And it did. He had a 5.4 war, the best on this list. He's the youngest player on this list. He's got the highest WRC plus at 146 on this list, a 225 ISO, which is really incredible. 
um, because he's only 21.8. So that's kind of indicative of what he's capable of doing in the future. I mean, if, if the kid's 21.8 and he puts up a 225 ISO, it's usually the last thing to come with a lot of players, but it came pretty fast for Julio. The most home runs on this list at 28, 25 stolen bases. So he's already signed a 12-year deal back in August for $209 million. The kid's not going anywhere. And like I said, I think he's going to be the centerpiece to a Seattle Mariners rebuild that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And as I mentioned before, if you guys want to support the channel, head over and check out all my exclusive content on Patreon. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. I want to take a minute to shout out my level three sponsors over on Patreon. Tom Barda, Max, Brad, Gary D. Childers Jr., Just Dingers Breaks, 909 Sports Cards on Instagram, Greg Graham, JP Navarro, Kenny Winkles, Larry Canterbury, Max Antony, Jason Hall, Bobby Lynch, Bruce Wiley, Graham Cochran, and Mike Barrier. If this is your first time watching, I appreciate the views. I appreciate all the supporters on Patreon and all of my subscribers to the channel. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and tell me who you're chasing out of this release in the comments. Y'all have a great one.